what up guys today i'm going to show you how to swap injectors on your car if you want to swap from stocks to 47 pound first thing you want to do is remove your engine cover and remove your strut brace You also want to remember to disable the fuel pump or pull the fuel pump fuse out of the fuse box so you don't get fuel everywhere to depressurize the fuel system. You go ahead and take the engine cover off. Dirty. I'm just going to pull the fuse, crank the car, let it run the fuel out, and then I'm going to disconnect the line and put a towel under it. It shouldn't be as much as if you were to not do it this way. All right, that should have taken care of a little bit of it, whatever was left, uh, ready to move on. All right, next thing you wanna do is remove these coolant lines that are sitting on top of this fuel rail, uh, four bolts. Go ahead and take those up and then we'll be able to get this fuel rail out a little bit easier. I don't guess you have to if you don't want to, but it's gonna make it a hell of a lot easier. That's what I'm gonna do. After you're done with that, uh, disconnect one, two, three, four connectors on each side. Uh, the electrical connectors that actually go to the uh, fuel injector. I'm going to go ahead and take these cooling lines up and then I'll pull this rail off. Uh, disconnect fuel supply right here and I'm going to have a towel ready just in case there's a little extra left over. There we go. Number 10, deep well is what you'll need. As you can see, just pick that up, kind of get it out of our way. There we go. Take this all. Sorry. Go ahead and move these lines off. Get them out of the way. You can remove the insulator that sits on top of the injectors. Be careful with this piece, you don't want to break, it's pretty valuable. One on each side. All right, now that we got the coolant lines out of the way, got the insulators off the top. This is gonna be our fuel rail. Um, like I said, you gotta disconnect those electrical connections. Uh, still gotta disconnect the main line. Uh, put a towel under there just in case there's a little bit left. I'm about to go ahead and get this thing off. We'll show you guys. Uh, my car's almost five years old. These clips are a little bit finicky to get off if you need to. Get a set of needle nose or something and just kind of pry toward the clip like that and that'll make it a little easier to pop off. See if you can get a little better view right here. Just 
Take your needle nose, push in a little bit, give it a little wiggle, and it comes off just like that. I got the first two done, still got two more, and then the other side. And that's it, guys. We got all eight electrical connectors off. Uh, next thing is to pull the main fuel line, disconnect, and go ahead and take the rail off. Excuse my voice, I'm getting over a cold and ain't been easy. Got a sore throat, cold, and everything else. So, been fun. We'll come right here and disconnect that main line. Should be fun. Probably get fuel all over my damn mouth and everything else. Stick your towel up underneath here. out of the way uh, very little fuel we got lucky very little just a little bit I'm glad I depressurized it now all right guys we're ready to pull this rail up I'm gonna take the rail off take it out to the grass and try to drain it and there's probably some more fuel in the rail but we'll see I'm gonna move this main fuel line out of the way and move this out of the way Colon hose that we disconnected earlier. All right, go ahead and take this off. Get that out of the way too, so we can get the fuel rail off the top. All right, after all that, the fuel rails hold in, held in by these four bolts, uh, two on each side. So we're gonna go ahead and take those off and then we'll just pull it up and out. Uh, we got lucky with this because the bolts holding in the fuel rail are the same 10 millimeter. Um, and you'll probably need a deep well for this as well. So I'm just gonna use the same socket and ratchet. Injectors are seated in there with the rubber O-ring, so just a little bit of wiggling. All it takes to get them out. Got that side free. Alright guys, fuel rail's loose, I'm about to pull it out. I have to watch out for this because it's kind of sitting on top of it. But... Let's take this thing to the grass and see if anything is in it actually. Yeah, getting a little bit out. Kind of figured we would, but drain his out. So I'm gonna get this shit all over the garage. All right, guys, just a quick way to show you how to get these off. Uh, on the fuel rail, of course, you have your injector. Uh, there's this little clip right here. You're just going to 
see if I can do this while holding the camera. Set it down. Each one has a clip. You just remove the clip, pull it to the side a little bit, and it pops off. And then uh, the first one you take off, the fuel rail will still be a little bit pressurized because everything that was residual that drained was from here. Uh, there's still fuel in this rail, so it'll be kind of hard to get off. Um, and when it does come off, you'll have a little bit of fuel come out. But after that, just wiggle. Wiggle these things a little bit, and they pop right out. But uh, be careful because you might still have a rubber O-ring still in there because they're kind of tough to come out. Uh, take your needle nose or whatever and come right out. And that's how you take them off. I'll show you in just a second how to put them back on. Alright guys, so how to put a new one on. Grab your new injector. Uh, make sure there's no previous o-ring in there. I mean, you know, just common sense stuff uh, Inspect your o-rings make sure everything's legit Go ahead and insert it push it all the way down Take your clip retainer clip So just align the back flat piece with the flat side Kind of hard to do one-handed and then just push it on and then you can see it clips there and then check the inside And make sure the retainers all the way on and that's it. All right, guys. Uh, now we got the injector swapped out. Just gonna go ahead and do it all in reverse order. Um, got all the new injectors on. So what I did is just uh, put the fuel rail back in place, line them up with all the holes. Uh, as you can see from the pictures, I cleaned the holes out the best I could with a vacuum and a rag. Um, so just put all my injectors on, put the clips on, uh, line the rail up and press down on each one make sure everyone's in place we're gonna go ahead and put those four 10 millimeter bolts back in with our uh, socket and ratchet uh, i'm gonna go ahead and put those in now all right guys now that we got all four back in place fuel rails bolted back down uh go ahead and connect your eight connectors back uh your eight electrical connections to your uh, fuel injector. Go ahead and connect those back. You can do that now. And these are a lot easier to connect back than they were to get off. Uh, that, not that they were hard to get off. It's just con connectors can be a pain in the ass sometimes. And it's a lot easier to connect these. They're all facing the right way. As I was showing the orientation of the injector so they go on make sure they all click into place uh you don't want to have fuel problems later down the road make sure they're all on there secure got four on this side we'll hit the other side real quick it's just the same options to take it all same operations to put it back on as it was to take it off just in reverse order for you for example this video is just for anybody who maybe didn't know where to start when trying to take it off. I noticed there wasn't very many videos changing injectors for uh, our 11 through 14 coyotes. I just made this hoping to help somebody who maybe needed to know how to do it or didn't have a clue where to start. So if I can just help one person, it's worth making a video to me. All right, we got all the electrical connections back on. Now we need to connect that main line, fuel main line. Uh, after that, put the insulators back over the top of the rail. Um, put our coolant trays and mount back on and mount that back down. And then put our engine cover on and our brace and we'll be ready to go. Um, remember, probably not a good idea to start your car with new injectors unless you have spoken with your tuner or you're doing your tuning and you've adjusted for the new uh, bigger injector. Um, I'm not sure what happens if you don't. I'm just going to say you're going to have fuel issues. Uh, I've already spoken with my tuner and I've got a tune that I'm about to put on this car now uh, to accommodate the larger injector. So uh, once we get it done, I'm going to swap that tune and get it running again. Alright guys, that's it. Car's back together in one piece. Uh, don't forget. <laughs> uh, I almost did.
if you did the same method I did, taking the fuse out of the number 13 slot, don't forget to put it back in. Uh, like I said, you can dismantle, disable the fuel pump from the trunk if you want. Um, I don't know what method you chose. I just chose to fuel, pull the fuel pump fuse. Uh, it's easy. So don't forget to put that back in. Um, it's back together in one piece. Everything went pretty smooth. I'm going to go ahead and swap my tune and get it cranked up, and I'll let you know how I like the 85. Thanks for watching.